So you want to know what's cheaper, making your own flies or buying them at the store, man. I'm going to tell you, without a doubt, it is making your own flies. But of course, with everything in life, there's a catch. And let's get into it. If we're going to get into the economics of making your own flies, we got to talk about the tools. And let's just talk about the bare minimum tools you need. You need a vise, you need a pair of scissors, and uh, where is it? And you're gonna need this guy right here, a bobbin. That is it. You can get out of hand with tools. You can go out, you could buy like your uh, UV light to cure UV resins. Uh, you can buy uh, a bodkin, which kind of would make sense to have, but at the same time, you could just find a needle or a pin or something around the house. That's not really a game changer, um, or a, rather a deal breaker. Um, there's other things like uh, dubbing whirls uh, for, for making you know your dubbing uh, loops and stuff like that a lot easier to make. But these things can be easily remedied by just going around the house and making your own little tools and your own little jigs. Heck, my first bobbin for the first year of me uh, tying my own flies wasn't this guy here. I made my own bobbin out of just a, a, a pen, uh, the inside of a pen, the, the ink part uh, where, where the ink's in. I cut that off, uh, cleaned it up a bit, and I took a coat hanger and fashioned it until it looked something like this. Used that for a year. I hated it, but it worked to a point. My vice, still to this day, is this little pin vice. I bought these, um, three of these pins, of uh, 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 pin vices. A medium size, which is what you see here, a large, and a small. I can basically tie any fly I ever want to, uh, to tie with just these three. That's all you need and it cost me at the time, which was years ago, like three dollars. Now I think they're about six, maybe ten dollars. This is all Canadian. I'm talking Canadian funds the whole time because I am Canadian. So I don't understand other currencies right now because it always fluctuates. So if I were to give you something right now, it's going to change. Guaranteed. Things are a little uncertain at times. So anyways, that's what I use and I got used to it so I didn't buy a new vise. Now here's the deal. If you want a really nice vise that has rotary features, you're going to spend some money. Upwards of 200 and up, maybe even $1,000. And this is all of course, once again, Canadian funds. But that's where things can get out of hand. When you start looking at, now I have a little cheat sheet here so I apologize. Um, if you're getting, some people want a spare bobbin for doing certain flies and uh, 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 that's fine, but that's gonna cost uh, money. And when we're talking about fly tying economics with yours truly, you gotta uh, put that in there. You gotta add all that up because these are, these are costs that will uh, basically make, making each fly a little bit more just because you gotta add that in. As far as materials go, let's get into that now. So here's the deal. When I first started making flies, I didn't know what I was doing. So basically, if I wanted to uh, make a fly, I had to find stuff around the house. Luckily for me, I also hunt. So I, I'm a big upland and waterfowl hunter. So I basically have bags of, of grouse, um, roughed grouse. I have, uh, you know, mallard uh, flank. I have, you know, I mean, the list goes on. So that's one really cool thing about it. But you know what I also did was I would go on walks with, with my family and we would go and, and we would kind of make it a fun game. Let's find feathers and stuff and, and collect them for, for daddy's uh, fly time. So out we would go and we would find some pretty cool feathers at times from birds and, and fowl that um, you just don't find in the stores. So that's also a cool option. So I want to go over just something quickly here. And this was my original um, tie, uh, fly tying. I'm going to say tie flying tons of times. I know it. It's just one of those things that I do. But 
Here's the deal. Um, this is my original little kit that I came up with. And it has some dubbing on the top. It has some grouse feathers. Uh, it has some copper wire. And this is kind of neat. So I'm going to open it up here. Uh, this is just copper wire from a standard um, 240... Uh, um, uh, what is it? The uh, just like for for ovens and stuff like that. That that wire. It's really heavy gauge, and on the inside you got three of these neutral ground and your your power. And inside is small brass or small brass rather small copper wire. That's small size. If you were to go buy um, the copper wire at the store, that would come in like a little you know bobbin type thing like this. Anyways, uh, moving along. So the dubbing that I have is I have tons of, or not tons, but I had the colors that, that got me by. So I have tans and white and browns, uh, grays, and I have just a little bit of pink left. Where did I find the dubbing? Great question. Hats. I had a whole bunch of acrylic and, um, and wool hats, and I would just take little bits on the inside um, where you couldn't see it. Now, I had some old janky looking uh, tubes that needed to go, so those I just took out. And basically, I had an old coffee grinder, put that in the coffee grinder, boom, I had a bunch of dubbing in sorts of uh, all sorts of crazy colors. As well, when it came to flash and all that stuff, I used um, I used candy wrappers. I used uh, um, stuff at the dollar store, which I continue to use, like like this right here. This is gold uh, tinsel for for Christmas. For a dollar fifty, I have more than I'll have ever used in my whole entire life. And I have uh, uh, gold, and I have red. Uh, it would have been nice to have silver, but I don't have that yet. But I could always just use candy wrappers. Candy wrappers on the inside are usually like a nice foil. Kit Kat comes to mind. As well, panko breadcrumb uh, uh, packaging is amazing. I believe it's Mylar and it works like Mylar. Uh, it's, very, um, it's very tough and I've had no problems using it whatsoever. Look around your house, you're gonna find a ton of materials. You just gotta use your imagination, get a little creative and make your own tools and, and, and find your own materials and that's it. But, here's the big but. Let's talk about if you don't wanna be as resourceful as that and if you don't wanna be the super cheap frugal type fly fisher. There's nothing wrong with that. What do you absolutely need to get started in materials? We went over what you need for, for tools, you know, your bobbin, um, your scissors and, and a vise. The other stuff is nice to haves. So before you get bogged down, I will say when it comes to whip finishing, a lot of people like a whip finishing tool. Um, I use my hands. I learned how to use my hands and I use it and I find it it works just fine. Will I get a whip finisher? I don't know. I, I just don't see the point. I might have one one day just to see what it's all about, but for now, these guys, perfect. All right, back to the cheat sheet. I wanna to talk to you about if I were to have to go out and buy some materials. If you buy a kit, the kit, you don't get to choose anything. They just predetermine what goes in there. <laughs> so when um, when you buy that kit, and they're really pricey too. I mean, from anywhere from 100 to even $200 for some of them. And they, the stuff is just janky anyways. And it's like really subpar materials. You're better off just going out and buying this. And for $105, I came up with um, how you can make your first 75 flies for that price. You could make more if you kind of play around with the numbers, but so on the list, uh, we will start um, with this guy right here. Pardon my reach. The dubbing dispenser. This is rabbit dubbing. You buy this, it's like 20 bucks. I have all my, my uh, prices over here. This is real pricing uh, if you were to take from this uh, uh, point, uh, which is February 16th, February 17th, something like that. Anyways, this right here. And it comes in a ton of different colors, rabbit dubbing. I will also say that you should get Grizzly Hackle. And when you're looking at which uh, color, Grizzly Hackle does it all. 
you can you can use grizzly hackle on all your atoms uh you can do it on your elk hair caddises all all that you don't need these certain colors for this or that the damn trout doesn't know all right dude it's looking up it sees something that looks like a bug it's gonna smash it it's gonna eat it but of course the smart trout kind of been around a little bit so you kind of get knowing what's going on we'll get into that probably in another video but for the most part just get a grizzly hackle you're fine and this is a half cape and this is the dry fly hackle this isn't saddle hackle get the dry fly hackle and you'll be you'll be happy you did so <clears throat> pardon me um what's next on the list so uh after that um you know your copper wire it comes in like a little bobbiny thing like this a uh, little spool sorry uh and <laughs> If uh, you're not like me and rushing, um, it will stay on the spool. But uh, of course, this brassy gold wire just grenaded on me. It happens, whatever. Another thing, chenille. All right, um, this is gonna be great for those bodies for woolly buggers. And you'll be able to make that, um, depending on the half cape that you get, you'll probably be able to find some uh, hackles in it because the cheaper the hackle, the more variant uh, var variances you're gonna find in that hackle. And I could make woolly buggers with this right here, especially on this side, there's some hackle here that definitely says woolly bugger on that. So chenille, all right? And that's uh, medium chenille and olive, just get olive, you're gonna be good. Another thing, elk hair. I'm telling you right now, if you're gonna make a, uh, a, a dry fly, elk hair caddis is your best bet. And I will uh, link to the description of how to make this. I have a video on that, super simple, and you'll love me for it. You'll catch fish when there is no a caddis fly within 100 miles of you. Another thing, pheasant tail, go get you one. These are fantastic. You'll be happy that you got it. You'll make a ton of different flies with that. You can make um, pheasant tails with it uh, and yada, yada, yada. There you go. All right. So, um, oh yes, and thread. This is really important. I want to talk about this thread. This is 140 denier uh, ultra thread, UTC, okay? Um, get 140, that way you can, uh, when you're learning, you can reef on it doesn't snap it doesn't break all over the place if you buy the cheap three aught or uh six aught uh or eight aught you're gonna you're gonna kick it on on uh or you're gonna nick it on your your hooks and then you're gonna be upset just get the 140 it gives you a little bit of uh wiggle room there and the best part and this is the most important part make sure it is white or something close to white because so you can take um a sharpie chart pen whatever they're called and I mean, everybody has these around you could, and, and you can just put a little bit of that on the, th the thread and it soaks it up. And all of a sudden you have brown thread, you have black thread, you have blue, pink, yada, yada. Couple ways that you can save some money. So that's, that's that. All right, three hooks, three, uh, three packages of hooks for your first 75. You can make it a hundred if you uh, want to, but there's six bucks a piece right now. And, uh, and you could, you could buy these cheaper, I know, but this is just, you know, the average price. So streamer hooks, size eight, and you can make a whole bunch of woolly buggers with size eight or size 10. I find size eight and 10 are great for like brook trout, browns. Um, you know, uh, we have, um, a Lake run steel head here, uh, but the little guys will certainly hit a woolly bugger. I haven't had a big one swipe a woolly bugger, but, um, anyways, I digress. Dry fly hooks, size 14 or size 12. Um, I have size 14s. I like size 14. I find it's not too big, it's not too small. You can see it from a ways away. And as well, uh, if you're in the riffle, you can still see that size 14 really easily. Another thing is any type of nymph or, or wet fly hook will do, but I'm, I'm using uh, the size uh, 14 again, caddis, uh, curved caddis hook from Mustad. Uh, I'm going to have all the materials down in the description so you don't have to rewind and all that. But if I were to um, put together a little kit right there, you can basically guarantee that you can catch pretty much any type of fish um, in that river with just this stuff here. <sighs> 
All right, now that we got that off uh, our chest, we got to get into where things get out of hand and where things, where you're going to just start, it's just going to cost you money. And this is where us as uh, fly tires are going to kind of lose the uh, the argument a bit. And that is, well, let me let me give you a scenario. So say, you know, you adhere to, to my recommendation and you buy these, all right? And you go out there and um, give me a second here. I just want to see something, blah, 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 whatever. All right, so my apologies. But you're on the river, you're not catching anything. You got uh, all your dries, your wet nymphs, uh, um, wet flies and streamers, whatever. You can't catch anything. Buddy down maybe a couple hundred yards away is smashing them, just killing it. So you go up to him and you're like, bro, what are you using? And he's like, I'm using a, a, a Pats's uh, Silly Legs. Um, I think that's what it's called. I'll, I'll leave it underneath me. So no matter how hard you try, you're not gonna make a, a Pats's um, uh, Stonefly pattern. There's just, you just don't have the materials. You can, however, look around the house and kind of make it up. But the point is, is that you don't have the materials to make the true recipe. So out you have to go buy some black and brown chenille. Uh, you gotta buy the silly floss or the rubber legs, the silly legs or whatever. And um, you know, certain recipes will call for UV resins. Some, some guys will want head cement. Anyways, you get my point. You don't have the materials. So out you go and you spend 25 bucks so you can make it exactly like Tim Flagler, Tim Flag, you know what? His name's Tim, Tim Flagler today. I hope I got that right. My apologies if I didn't. If you want to make it like him, you're going to go out there and spend that kind of money. But wait, there's more. All of a sudden, the next day you go out, uh, this uh, this lady is just smashing them uh, on, on a wet fly or, uh, or, or an intruder. What the hell's an intruder? Well, it's this beautiful fly here. By the way, link in the description for my uh, simple intruder that won't cost you too much, but it works and it's great. Shameless plug, I know. All of a sudden, you wanna make that intruder. She's smashing fish, she's catching these really huge steelhead, and you're catching these inky little tiny brook trout, steelhead won't catch on that, all right? No matter what you're trying. So all of a sudden, you wanna go out and you buy this pink marabou, this blue marabou, and all this kind of stuff, and you know, tube flies, these crazy dry flies, you wanna make a parachute atoms, you wanna, uh, I don't know, just the list goes on, deceivers, uh, you know, all sorts of intruders. You get the point, it's gonna cost you more money, and if you got ADHD, you're gonna just go out and spend thousands of dollars on just ridiculous amounts of materials. And then if you're lucky enough, you'll have enough um, focus that you'll be able to tie all of whatever you're making and stick to that. But if you're like any freaking fly tire there is out there, you're gonna have shoe boxes full of just like, I, I'm not gonna do all of them. I got shoe boxes full of materials. I have some, you know, like marabou's, uh, different types of dubbings. Uh, um, geez, this is a really ragged looking crystal flash. Crystal flash, like, <sighs> people, you gotta stay focused. You gotta keep on a budget if you wanna win the argument. If you wanna make your wife or your husband or, or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, not get angry at you and, and, and be able to go out for dinner because, you know, that's what it, life's about is other experiences, not just fly fishing. But for us, that's not what this video is about. This video is about if it's cheaper or not. It's cheaper if you can, like I said, keep to your, keep to your guns and not go crazy and buy every freaking laser dubbing that there is and every single color because you just can't get enough of seeing how somebody on uh, Instagram is making this fly and saying how effective it is. You know, how do you know how effective it is, dude? Go out there, see what works, use these recommended materials, go catch some fish because that's what this is about, catching fish. 
Anyways, I'm glad that you stuck around this long. Please subscribe. Man, I need the numbers. I need them, baby.